Hey everyone, I just did a massive update to the animation library and if you're a Minecraft animator, you're gonna love this. So last year in August, I released the standard animation library, which had 42 pre-made ready to use animations in Blender using the BPS rig version for character rig. And a lot of you got it and found it very useful. Now I decided to expand the library and create more versions of it. And I'm happy to say that after two weeks of caffeine induced non-stop work, I finally finished all four versions and all of them are now available and ready to use. There is a version for everyone, including a free one. So be sure to stick around and check them out throughout the video. First, I will show you all four animation library categories and what you can expect from each of them. Then I will teach you how to install the animation asset library in a few seconds. And finally, I will show you the practical ways and tips and tricks of using it so you can save some time and focus on what matters, which is storytelling. So the largest or the premium animation library has 120 ready to use smooth animations, which comes with its own asset library and thumbnails applied to each asset for easy navigation. It's available on my Patreon shop for $20, but if you're already a Patreon member of gold tier or above, then you will get it for free. But if you can't afford right now, then don't worry, I just updated my standard animation library, which had 42 animations before and cost $10. Now, it still costs $10, but it has a small upgrade and it went from 42 to 50 clean and smooth ready to use animations. And it also comes with its own asset library, which it didn't have before. If you bought this library from my shop before, then you can get it for free by revisiting it. If you're an iron Patreon or above, then you can get it for free as well. But if you can't afford that either, then you can check out my mini animation library, which has 20 animations, also comes with its own asset library and can be a great budget choice to get you started. And if you're a stone Patreon and above, you get it for free. But again, if it's still expensive, then I also have a free version of this, which has eight animations with its own asset library. You can get it via the link in the description, so you can try it before you buy or stick with the free version if you want. Obviously, if you can't afford, my suggestion would be to go with the premium animation library, which is again $20 and gets you 120 ready to use animations so you can save a lot of time during your projects. It's a one time purchase and you get it for a lifetime. Also, keep in mind that once you buy the library, there will be no refunds. So please keep that in mind and watch this video until the end to decide whether you want to get this library or not. Now let's move on to the next segment. I will show you how to quickly install the animation asset library. First, check out the description for all the links and get the library you want, or become a Patreon member to get it as well. You can also get the free version via the Google Drive link. Once you do that, for organization's sake, make sure to move the zipped file to your desired folder where you usually keep your Blender assets. I keep mine in the Blender folder and inside it I have a separate folder for the asset libraries. Then once you move there, open the file and unzip it using either WinRAR, 7-Zip or any other unzipping tool. Once you do that, you should be able to see the Blender files, also these text files called .asset and finally there should be a readme file. If you are stuck on anything, the instructions will be provided in the readme file. But for now, you can just follow along and ignore it. So let's open up Blender, then click on edit, preferences, file paths and under asset library, there should be a section of different asset libraries you have added inside the Blender. For some of you, this might be empty, but that's fine. Now we need to click on this plus button and then locate the folder where we saved and unzipped our animation library file. Again, in my case, it's inside the Blender, then Asset Library, and then Premium Animation Library Wood Plank. And now once you locate it, click on Add Asset Library once and then twice. And now you can see that the Wood Plank Animation Library is added there. The names will be different depending on which version you download, but all of them should have the Animation Library Wood Plank in them. And that's it, congratulations, you just installed the animation library in a few seconds with a few clicks. Now close the preferences, expand the timeline and over here in the corner, switch this from timeline to asset browser. Now click here on all libraries and switch this to Woodplank animation library. And here you should be able to see all animations organized in different catalogs. If I click on all, I will be able to see all animations but I can also filter through different categories for easy navigations. So I have a category for combat, reaction and damage, emotes and expressions, core movements and loops, interaction and utility, and based on a lot of requests, we also have some cool parkour animations. Now it's time to show you how to use this library and how powerful it can be. There are a lot of ways you can use this and you can get very creative while saving a lot of time. In this segment, I will show you how I use this in my own workflow so you can get your own ideas and maybe use it even better than I do. So, I will show you two main ways I use this to create projects like the Alex and Steve series and other short animations. The first method is an easy one, the second method is a bit more advanced but it's much better. So, the first way you can use this library is to go to any catalog you find interesting. 
For example, I will use this walk cycle animation since that's what I imagine most people will go with. So click on core movements and loops catalog. Now take one of the walk cycles and drag and drop it inside the viewport. You can see that we got this character with an empty attached to it at the bottom. Now it's very important to know that if I try to select the character and attempt to go to pose mode, you can see that I am not able to do that. It only selects the whole outline of the character and nothing more. So to fix that, I will undo this action and show you a proper way. So once we drag and drop the animation in the 3D viewport, don't click anywhere. Instead, just click on Ctrl Z and now you will notice that the character jumps back into the world origin. We are now able to select the outline, click on Ctrl Tab and go to pose mode and keep working from there. So we got the character with its own skin and animation inside the scene. Now, make sure you are in the solid view so that the animation runs smoothly inside the viewport. Then expand this menu and switch it to textures so that we can see the character's skin and textures. You will notice that all characters have my own wood plank skin applied to them because due to some rules, I avoided using Steve's skin. The same thing goes with weapons. I did not use the actual Minecraft weapons or textures, but I will show you how to work around that later in this video. Now, if you want to change the skin, it's easy. But this step is optional and you can just leave the wood plank skin on if you want. But if you would like to add your own skin, then first go out of the pose mode by clicking Control tab. Then you can select the material icon on top of the character. Then go to the material properties over here. Make sure you have the skin selected. And now you can close the skin from here and locate any skin you want and it will be applied to the character. I will also show you how to enable the face just in case you want to use it. For most of these animations, there are no facial expressions, so I just disable the facial features because they would get in the way. But if you want to enable them, select the material icon on top, then press on N to go to the sidebar, click on item, and then expand the properties panel. Now if you scroll this down, you can have a lot of options to adjust the face. So I can drag my mouse down for example, turn this on, and then the face will be enabled. And a bonus tip, some people ask how to enable teeth. So if I select the character's outline, click on control tab, go to pose mode. I'm going to open the mouth just in case. Then I'm going to go to this very right bone on the right side and then make sure you're in the item and properties again. And then you can enable teeth from here. So this is how you enable the face, the facial features, and you can play around with them and then change the facial locations, the sizes and all that stuff. But for this animation, I just disabled the faces so that it wasn't going to get in the way. Now let's continue. Now let's say I want my character to move forward instead of standing in one place. First of all, hover over the corner until you see this plus icon. Then drag it up and it will create a new window. Now click over here and switch this to timeline. Inside the viewport, make sure you have your character selected. Go back to pose mode and press on A to select all characters bones. Then hover over the timeline and press on A to make sure all keyframes are selected. And then click on shift E, make cyclic. Now, if I play my animation, you can see the character will walk infinitely. This is because I made the walk cycle loopable. A lot of these animations in the asset browser are loopable and they have this L next to their names. So you can make them cycle and play them over and over again if you want. Now, back to our walk cycle. Select the character's root bone and go to the starting frame. Press on K and select location. If K doesn't work, then press on I. Now I can go to frame 30, move it forward slightly and see if I like it. Then I can press on I or K again and choose location. You can see that the character is sliding a little, so hover over the timeline, select all keyframes of the root bone and then click on T and choose linear. Now if it's still sliding, make sure to adjust the location because you might have it moved too far or too close to the start position. Once we are happy with it, we can now hover over the timeline again, press on Shift E and then this time choose linear extrapolation. And now you can see our character will walk forward infinitely until we stop playing. And the great thing about this is that you can go to your starting keyframes, make adjustments and those adjustments will follow throughout the whole animation. Now, let me show you the second way I use this animation library. I will open the Blender file called Practice File Wood Plank. The link for this will be in the description so you can just download it and follow along. Once you open up the file, you can see that we have this tiny scene with basic planes and cubes and also we have my character in there. If I play my animation, you can see that my character slides forward, then stops and does nothing, then slides forward again and stands in front of the cube, which is supposed to be a crafting table. Then he just stands there for a bit, turns around, slides fast and then leaves the scene. Now this is a small layout, but we cannot really tell what's going on inside the scene. But let's say I want my character to walk, wave at someone, look around, then walk forward, craft something, then dodge something from a potential enemy and run away. Can I do it? Absolutely, and I can do it pretty fast too with this library. So let me show you how it's done. Inside this practice blender file, there is an asset library added on the right side. If this is empty, make sure you click on all libraries and then open the wood plank animation library. This is the same setup I use for my own animation workflow, so feel free to save this for future references. 
So first of all, I can go to my asset browser and search for walk cycle. I will grab any of these, for example, walk cycle 2 and then drag and drop it in the scene. But instead of clicking control Z, we can just click on X and then delete it. Now, if I go to my action editor, you can see that we imported the walk cycle action. Now I will go to the NLA editor, push down this wood plank action into a strip. So the root bone keyframes turn into the NLA strip. Now I can select the strip, hover over the NLA editor, click on shift A and select walk cycle. There you go, we just created a walk cycle action strip inside the NLA editor. Now, during this showcase, I will be doing the same things with all strips I import over and over again, so keep that in mind. And here are those things. First, click on end to open the properties in the NLA editor. Then change the extrapolation from whole to nothing. Under this section, we also have the blend in and blend out options, which we can use to smoothly transition from one animation to another. Then if you scroll down and expand the action clip, we can use the playback scale to change the speed of the animation. And we can use the repeat to repeat the animations and loop them over and over again if you want. So now I will time lapse this part and you will see me doing the same things, importing the actions, blending them with each other and playing around with speed and repeat. So at the end, I have imported the walk cycle, waving, looking around, another walk cycle, crafting hand slide, crouching, and the panic running animations. All of those can be found in the premium animation library, and some of them can be found in the budget options as well. The final trick you can do is search for the breathing animation, drag and drop it, and put it on top of everything. Make it faster if you need to. Repeat it so that it covers the whole animation and then set the blending mode from replace to combine. And this will ensure that your character is breathing on the parts where he is not moving around too much. So there is no stagnant motion and the character is always moving around. But sometimes this might create some weird issues. So feel free to delete it if that happens as this part is just optional and works in some cases. I know this might be complicated for some of you. So if you need a detailed tutorial for the NLA editor, the link will be in the description. So here's the result we created within a few minutes using the animation library and the NLA editor. You can see the power and the creative ability you can get from this animation library. It saves you a lot of time and I personally use it a lot and found many benefits with it. Now let's quickly talk about how you can get your own weapons and items to use with this library. The combat animations have references slash dummy versions of the weapons. But if you want to use the custom weapons on the top of the animations, there are many ways to do so. For example, one lazy way is to try to import any action, such as this horizontal sword swing animation. Now we can append an actual Minecraft sword inside the blender. You can either use the Boxscape Studios asset pack, MC Preps item spawner, or Ice Cube's asset library. All of those are free, and if you want a tutorial on how to get them, the link will be in the description of this video. I will go to my add-on section here and open MC Prep. Then go to item spawner, click on reload assets, and type sword. I will spawn a diamond sword for example. Now I can go to the start frame and try to align and place the diamond sword into my character's hand. Then select the diamond sword, shift select the reference sword, click on control P and then parent it. Now it's parented and it will follow along. And finally, you can go to the outliner, expand the sword swing horizontal character icon and you will find the sword reference 007. If you're using other animations, then the numbers will be different. Now, you can click on the eye and the camera icon and it will be hidden both from the viewpoint and from the rendered views so that when the character moves, only the diamond sword will be visible and the dummy weapons or the reference weapons will be invisible at the end. There are of course other ways to do it. You can attach the weapon to the character straight away and animate it if you like. The most important thing is that the base character motions are done so adding the weapons and adding some animations on them should be easy to do. So there you have it. All animation libraries are available on my Patreon shop or on my Patreon memberships. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. If you want to purchase any of these libraries, the link will be in the description. If you want to become a Patreon member instead, then click the second link in the description. Also, if you like this video and subscribe, it will motivate me to make more animations, more tutorials and more similar products. Now, if you want to see every single animation that you're going to get inside the premium animation library before buying, then you can click here to watch the promo video. Thank you for watching. Thank you for the support. 
and stay creative. I will see you in the next video.